Yes. You um, said a couple times about Jesus speaking to you directly, for Jesus speaking directly. I'm wondering how that voice comes to you. Is it through symbols? Is it through words? Is it through a knowing? If it is a knowing, then it fits into a question from last night of discernment of ego versus spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is about the voice of Jesus and, and relating to that. You know, I had been raised in Christianity in the Protestant faith in a denomination called United Church of Christ and I remember years going to church, Bible school in the summer and so on and so forth. But I can't say that I really felt a very, very close connection. It was more like it was just that was almost like the imprint, that was the conditioning that was this there as part of the family and the, so on and so forth. And then I went through university, I went through a lot of disillusionment, a lot of tears, a lot of soul searching, a lot of exploring a lot of different theologies and pathways. And then when I came to the Course, it was almost like initially like rediscovering Jesus, like they sometimes talk about a born-again experience. It was like, oh, this is brand new. Almost like, I didn't even know you at all, kind of a feeling. But it was, it was very heartwarming. And initially it was more of, a, of an inner knowing and a sense of like a little tickle in my heart. It didn't have any kind of uh, audible kind of words to it. Um, Occasionally I, I would think that I maybe would hear a word of comfort, but I didn't, couldn't tell whether that was just me, the ego, just throwing in a, a word, almost like a little affirmation or something, or it was the presence. And then I immersed myself into A Course in Miracles. I just kind of like, for, like I say, around two and a half years, I was re reading it for about eight hours a day. And through that immersion process of just like, I wasn't reading any other books, I wasn't even looking at newspaper or magazine, I was just like opening the book like an oracle and letting it answer questions for me and then getting excited and very passionate about the answers and go into it that way. That went on for about two and a half years and then it was, it wasn't like a, as Helen Shuckman has said, it wasn't like an audible voice, but it was like this clear stream of thoughts that was very distinctive, and it had a presence with it. It was very calm, and a sense of certainty. Like this stream of thoughts was something that I, I really knew that would do me no good to question. Like this stream of thoughts was re reflecting a state of really true knowing, uh, with absolute certainty. And it was so friendly too, it was like a friendly feeling with it. And then I just started to follow what it would ask me to do. And it was very specific. It wasn't like, all is love and la da 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 da. It wasn't like that at all. It was, you know, do this, pay back this loan, uh, call so and so, go here, you forgot your keys, turn right. You know, it was extremely specific. And I just discovered really that by following what it wanted me to do, that I was very joyful. And it was very specific too, sometimes when it would talk about Course in Miracles teachings, teachings from the Bible, uh, the Apostles, um, Course in Miracles teachers even, it would, it would be giving me this running commentary. For example, uh, like in the late 1980s, it said, you know, we're going traveling. And I said, oh, okay, I don't know how that's going to work. And we would go, and I would go around, I took trips up to uh, the Foundation for A Course in Miracles. It was then in Roscoe, New York, in the Catskill Mountains. And I would go sit there quietly and be at a workshop, for example, with Ken Wapnick. And while Ken was teaching, I was getting a commentary on the teaching in my mind. Uh, it was just saying, this, that's a good point, remember this, and in any places where there was additional commentary was necessary, 
for clarification, like on level confusion or different areas where I had questions, it was like a back and forth. Uh, it, was, it was like a running commentary. Then when I would get out of the workshop, it's almost like a Jesus Muzak channel or something. Uh, it's like, oh my God. It's like, so then we got, we're on Jesus channel. It was like songs that would be inspiring. Uh, you know, we said Mozart, you know, took down the music and August Rush and you know, on and on. So, a lot of time I wasn't like pondering questions of the universe or I wasn't wondering about things in the world. I was just, just relaxing and then I would get this beautiful music, kind of angelic music that would come in, which I thought was also from Jesus, very much inspired. And so thus began my work with the Course in the sense that people have said to me, who in the Course in Miracles community uh, has been your teacher? And I didn't have one. I mean, I had this connection with Jesus in my mind, telling me very specifically uh, what to do, where to go. And it wasn't like I really had a, a, a lot of resistance to it. Like with Helen Shuckman, she had enormous resistance to that voice. He would have to say, what I told you was this, what you wrote was that, now go back. This, it was a very slow, tedious process of seven years. I, I pretty much loosened from my self-concept of academia, of, of even wanting to be a Course in Miracles teacher or having a Course in Miracles career or any of that stuff. And so I really didn't have a lot of resistance to what he was guiding me to do. And then, at some point, as I came further and further into it, this seeming duality between David and Jesus, or between the, the channeler and the, ch and the channel and all this and that, that started to just collapse. I started to feel this unified experience, just, and then it was going full circle back to this knowing feeling, and this involuntary sense that I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth, and neither did I control it. So therefore I didn't have to know what to say. Well, that's comforting. And very much like Wayne Dyer, you know, just show up, and boom, it just comes. But there's no sense of, what am I going to talk about, what will the topic be, you know, it's just very involuntary.